Hi everyone, welcome back for another whiskey review. Now today looking at this very special Glendronach single cast from 1990. Now one thing I want to say at the start of this review is I'm 37 years of age at the moment, at the moment of recording this re review, born in 1984. This whiskey was distilled in 1990. Now my earliest memory as a person goes back to 1992 which is being in my classroom being scolded by teacher for not having done my homework and that's how far I can go obviously there are memories from before that which people tell me about and they show me pictures of and go this is what you did this is your first birthday or your second or third or you were at this page but as a person the earliest memory I have is of 1992 and this whiskey was distilled two years before that, which says something. I don't know what it says, but it says something that is older than my memory, which is something I like to think about a lot, considering how much subpar whiskey we drink globally, you know, in name of official bottlings or special airport releases or travel only releases. That was so good. Now, I don't want to be over dramatic, but a single cast whiskey from 1990 ate for 30 long years in a Pedro Jimenez sherry batch. 9th of April 1990. Now, today is the 24th of April. So it's been 31 years since. This was dissolved. Obviously, the whiskey was only aged for 30 years because it was bottled in 2020. Last year, during the most horrible year, some might say, in the history of mankind. 2020. COVID. I'm not going to get into that. I hate that word. But 1990 is when it was distilled. Bottled in 2020. Aged 30 years. Cast number 9333. One of 696 bottles. Bottled at a generous 50.5% ABV. It retails for 1400 Kiwi dollars, which is about 700 pounds. Which puts it, you know, if this is the premium and this is the ultra premium, it puts it out of the frame in terms of the price. Now, I just would like to say a deeper, sincerest thank you. To someone who I can't name because the person would be very, very embarrassed if I did. Um, and he made me promise I won't. But I've had this distinct pleasure of trying all of the six Glendronach Batch 18 single casks. Um, I think just missing one, which had sold out straight away. But this good friend of mine purchased these six bottles and offered them to me before even he got to try them. He said, look, I think you will appreciate these whiskeys. I would like for you to review them. And here they are in my whiskey room. And I've had this distinct pleasure today on the 24th of April of reviewing six single cast Glendron arcs back to back, which I don't know. I mean, if this is as good as get, I will be very happy having tried six different single cast Glendron arcs, all of them in a sherry cast. At cast rent. Um, if this is as good as gets, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. <laughs> but hopefully, long it may continue and more interesting drams keep coming my way. But this is a cheers to my friend's good health, who's allowed me to have this moment with these amazing whiskeys. Which, as I've done the reviews for all of the other single cars, Glentronax from Batch 18, I've joked repeatedly about the price points, which are quite high. Um, but they are quite rare drams from a distillery which is just absolutely cleaning up awards, making it name its name as a dominant force in a Scott single malt which is heavily sherried and probably the best. You could argue Abla does good sherried whiskies, but Glendronach is up there. But in terms of rarity, you know, I mean New Zealand gets 
very little in terms of allocation. Very, very little. You know, we're talking these, I think, maybe only 12 or 18 bottles came to New Zealand out of the whole 696. You know, even at 1400 retail. I don't know where they go. Maybe they go to Japan and Taiwan. Apparently, they buy everything. Um, maybe on slightly higher incomes than us, but. Hmm. All right, let's look into this particular whiskey. At $1,400. If you're watching this video, just take a moment for yourself. Think back to if your memory allows you to think back to something in 1990, in April 1990, when this was distilled in particular. Can you think that far? Or maybe you're even younger than me and have no memories. Of 1990. It is on the sweeter side, light initially, but now there's a lot happening as a whiskey is aging. And this review is going to be long because I do want to spend a lot of time with this particular whiskey in my glass because I want it to open up slowly. The subtle oak with a distinct sort of ripe mandarin. Or even orange peel sort of character. There's a dull chocolate note in the back. Mm. Wow. wow. They're just intertwining <laughs> mandarin orange peel sort of character with the dark chocolate. So good. I'm pretty sure I've experienced that before in a high quality chocolate um, I had in Scotland. Wow. A little bit of spice is trying to come through. I might have said it in the previous reviews of the other Glendronach single cask batch 18. Um, 50.5% is very high in alcohol overall. And you just don't feel it on the nose with these single cask releases. They seem sweet and light and very easy drinking. Um, very easy on the nose. Um, there's no sort of overpowering alcohol vapor on the nose at all. Wow, more spice. And this is something you might want to do at home. If you are nosing your whiskey, especially a very high caliber like this, you do want to spend your time with it, obviously, but you want to smoke the whiskey on the top, bottom, and middle. And middle is where the sweet spot is. And you hold it sort of two to four inches off your nose and nose it on the middle. And that's where you will find the most distinct characters. If your nose are too low down here, you're going to get some of the alcohol vapor. And up top, it's going to be too light. But somewhere in the middle is where the sweet spot. Wow. Almost a hint of a ginger character on the nose. All right, time to sip it. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Sweetness. There's a hint of mocha it's making me crackle <laughs> wow I mean the whole time I've been recording this video I'm trying to think what else 1400 could be spent on maybe a watered down official bottling of a 30 year old 35 year old maybe even a 40 year old from a lesser known distillery or perhaps a heavily marketed watered down multi-barrel release or you could get something like this which 
has its own unique dimensions. Wow. Mm. <laughs> for those of you who may have or may not have very sharp eyes for those of you who have sharp eyes you might have seen I've allowed myself a little bit more than some of the others because this is just in a different league alright let's see what Glenn Tronach has to say about this particular single cast release on the nose, balance, exquisite balance of stone fruit, mandarin, and roast chestnut with chocolate, red grape, and rose pepper. I have no idea what rose pepper is, but I did get the chocolate. And they say mandarin, I kind of thought ripe mandarin or maybe orange peel. So it's kind of on point. Stone fruit, I'm not sure about, but roast chestnut, yep, that's interesting to say. Didn't get as much on the nose in terms of oak, but... It was quite nice, quite chewy, oily. And they reckon on the palette, toffee orange and silken red grape with cherry, chocolate, and lingering chestnut oak. Wow. I could just record a 30 minute video of me just sitting here and just doing this. <laughs> I'm being too dramatic. Now, uh, this is awesome. I mean, this is just an out of world experience. Not a lot of us could open a $1,400 bottle of whiskey just for drinking. You know, I mean, if I did open one, maybe I will open one. Maybe. This is not my bottle, but I'm going to keep a bottle for me. It's going to open. It will happen. And I'm going to revisit it. But this is my mate's bottle. It's going to go to him. But I'm going to open it. And in another video, part of this series of the Glendronach Batch 18 single cast, I did say um, when I reviewed a $800 bottle, a bottle yields 23 times 30 mil, or some people say double, nip, rev, uh, double nips, which 23 over 800 is around 40 bucks, roughly, loose mats. This being 1400 let's put it up to 70 bucks. But if you were to celebrate some amazing key milestones in a lifetime, um, 70 bucks a milestone, I think you could afford it. I don't know. Everyone's on different incomes. There we are in different countries doing different things. But this is something very special. And I'm 100% going to open a bottle of my own. Maybe open one and keep one for later. Because there's one thing happening, boys and girls, where are you watching? We're going to get further and further away from 1990. We're going to get further and further away from availability of these amazing sherry cask whiskies from any distillery, let alone Glendronach, any distillery. Because we have been drinking young sherry cask age stuff. And it's not that great. Doesn't make me happy. Um, adds some joy to my day, but it's very subpar. So some of these old, old, very good sherry cask whiskies, or the cask themselves, casks themselves, are disappearing. And one day they're not going to be around because people who drink high quality sherry. I'm moving on and reducing the numbers. Oh, so good. I think I'm going to go off camera and enjoy this a bit more. But the oak, spice, sweetness, just perfect marriage. This is something very special and for me in particular I haven't been really reviewing a lot of whiskey in the last month because life just keeps getting in the way and tonight I made the time to review all six Glendronach single casts from Badge 18 and finishing on this one feels just perfect 
it's almost a perfect ram. Otherwise, if you are liking the content, please like, share and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the very near future with another video. See you later. Bye-bye.